Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Put it on your calendar, 940 a.m. Eastern Time every Wednesday. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got uh, volatility in these markets, to say the least, Teddy. Uh, quite a week for retail, but jumping around to Forex, we have a little bit of uh, a reversal maybe in the dollar. We have yields back to 2.73% this morning. What do you think about this market? Uh, well, right now, I think we have a nice little corrective rally going against the dollar. Um, I think it's possible it could edge a little higher, and one of the main reasons is the Treasury bond market. Uh, we know that right now uh, the 10-year and the 30-year have been trending higher for the past week and a half. Uh, interestingly enough, the 30-year bond had a reverse head and shoulders that it broke out of last week. And over the past couple sessions, it's been trying to edge, you know, push resistance a little bit. So, I mean, right now, if that head and shoulders pattern is really true, we could still see a little bit more upside potential in interest rate or uh, interest rate pricing, meaning a little pressure on the dollar also in that with that variable, you know. But I would, be, I think that the markets are getting kind of skittish because when you really see how much the dollar has corrected when it has over the past like few months, it hasn't corrected very much. So I think sure. we're kind of at that. That little friction point right now yeah when i just take a look at it on a six month basis i mean quite a little pullback what do we have almost up to 105 right in mm -hmm. early may and we're sitting at 102.27 that's the dxy the bloomberg dollar index mm -hmm. um but that's coming as you say from a price point of 96 in in Correct. almost march um yeah, not really a pullback. We were, you know, I love Fibonacci levels, and I don't even have to put a, a Fibonacci level on that. We're nowhere near even to the 382 in terms of a right. real pullback uh, of still a bullish run. Uh, mm -hmm. Breaking down the individual pairings, where, where can we start off? What, what are you looking at this week for the individual pairings? Okay, well, interestingly enough, you know, the yen that I've been a bull of uh, for a very long has had a pretty nice correction over the past, like, especially week or so. Um, I would be careful at these levels being a seller. I'm not saying that we haven't seen the low yet, but we are kind of bottoming in there, especially with oil poised to break out to the upside, you know. So you got to realize that. The, the second the bonds turn and the 10 year turn, even on a daily basis, you see this knee jerk reaction in the US dollar yen trade. So I think that as the, the interest rate trade starts to give a little re relief, meaning the rates are going short term lower in the market rate and higher in pricing, I think as that starts to nudge up against resistance and pull back, you're gonna see a big snap back in the US dollar yen as well. You know, So okay. I, I, really, I really do believe that if oil does start to break out to the upside, we're in front of a holiday weekend you know there's a lot of reasons to be more bullish oil than not yeah and if we if we can break out if i mean right now we're wedging if we challenge that 116 level and hit it get above 116 well i can't see how the u.s dollar yen wouldn't explode to the upside you know so and the euro u.s dollar trade i would use cautious at caution at these levels because we already hit our short-term daily target we had a buy signal about a week and a half ago um but we had a weekly buy nice. signal that was finished yesterday or not yesterday, okay. last week. Um, and if that level runs out of gas, you know, that's why I was mentioning the head and shoulders in the uh, interest rate um, uh, market because these coincide with each other right now. So you have the rate yeah. pressure going down, meaning up in price, and the dollar pulling back. But it's very, very sensitive, you know, and we have a lot of inflation numbers that, hey, you know, we were talking about this months ago about how the lag is there. And now people are accepting the fact that, well, we're going to be talking about inflation six months from now still. You know, yeah. and and I even heard you earlier about people's choices. You know, like at Target, yeah, maybe you can get a, a good deal on a patio set right now, but people aren't going to be buying patio sets right now when they're spending six dollars a gallon. It's for a tough diesel. choice, right? Right, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, we got a caller, Teddy. All right, let's jump okay. to a caller if you don't mind. We got Jeff from Philly, and he wants to talk a little New Zealand dollar. Jeff, good morning, man. Thanks for calling in. Hi, good morning, Tommy. Thanks for taking my call, and uh, Teddy, thanks for. Uh, T taking my call. Um, so this is a little bit uh, of an obscure question, but um, I've been trading um, Econ News and FX for uh, about the last four years, and I saw something last night that I've never seen before. There, there were two very strange uh, price actions, and I, I wanted to ask you if you had, if you heard anything or you know just had any comments on this. So what I saw was um, there was a, a rate decision coming out in New Zealand at uh, ten o'clock. Uh, Eastern Time, PM, and um, three minutes 
before the news came out, uh, price started dropping. The, the New Zealand against the U.S. dollar uh, started dropping. Now, I, I've seen you know, sometimes news releases come out a little bit early, maybe 10 seconds, 30 seconds at most, something like that. But this was three minutes early. I saw the price started dropping. and But then, uh, exactly at uh, 10 o'clock, when the news release came out, it shot up like crazy. It was a, a huge uh, move, and uh, actually I made a lot of money. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it shot up in the opposite direction. And the weird thing about that, I mean, in addition to the, the early price drop for no apparent reason, is that the forecast for that rate decision was uh, 2%, and the actual was 2%, and 2.00%. I mean, precisely the same. So when I see big price moves like this, it's in response to some kind of a surprise. But, this, I mean, it's going to be less of a surprise. <laughs> it exactly matched the forecast. So to get this huge move, you know, without a surprise, and to get the price dropped in the opposite direction a little bit before the news, well, a few minutes before the news, uh, those are two very, you know, strange uh, things. Um, well, it is and it isn't. Uh, you got to remember when you're trading a news event, that's very typical, you know. So, I mean, especially in today's algo world. So, I would assume that probably right before that number, you have a lot of liquidation where a lot of um, algos will actually shut off because they don't want to trade the number because of the, you know, the, the noise that happens during those moments. You know, I mean, like you said, everything came out as expected, you know. So, now I think one of the biggest questions you have to ask is besides the knee jerk reaction on just the, the volatility of the the number going out is what are the expectations you know are they going to continue to follow suit you know so and i think that you know that there is an interest rate war going on now with all the central banks it's a matter of who's going to catch up to who first you know except for like japan where they're they're not doing anything when they said they would you know so i think that that's where you're getting these little reactions right now, but you get the expectations no matter what for New Zealand are not that good, you know? So where this raising the interest rate, would you would think it would help support their currency more? I mean, right now, New Zealand dollar isn't an upside correction. I view it as a correction, especially because their lockdown measures are very severe and still coming back again, you know? So there's a lot of reasons why their econ economic numbers are gonna be very poor moving forward over the next six months. So that's gonna weigh on their currency. So, and we know that they just pop their rate. Well, we're gonna pop our rate again in the next few weeks, no matter what, at least, and more, more likely over the next few months, we're gonna pop our rate more than theirs. So I think that that's why you're seeing this kind of a reaction that you're looking at that happened. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your insights. I appreciate you taking the time. Jeff, mm -hmm. that was a great question, man. Thanks so much for calling in. All right, thanks, take care. Teddy, I appreciate the update as always, man. Have a great holiday weekend, and we look forward to chatting you next Wednesday. We'll see where Crude is following Memorial Day, man. Higher. <laughs> Not surprising, down. man. Thanks so much, Take Teddy. I appreciate it as holiday. always. Okay, you too, Seriously. man. We'll talk to you next.